probably going to reveal something here I've never never revealed publicly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but I guess as time goes on, you get older and uh, it, it, you get to where you don't care anymore. So uh, basically, um, it, it, we, we had uh, working at my dad's salvage yard down in Alabama. I grew up doing that, working his. My mom had one about 10 or 15 miles away from my dad's, and I worked between both salvage yards helping them pull parts and what have you. And anyway, we had two guys that, that come to work there um, one time, and uh, it was two black guys, and uh, one of them was named Hutt, and the other one was named Cuz. And uh, so uh, when they started working there and what have you, uh, as a joke, people would call my call my dad Hutt and call me Little Hutt. And then over time, uh, uh, for some reason or other, they, I guess my dad got bigger and, and uh, started beating people up. And, and he just, uh, he, he, uh, he said, my name, ain't, my name ain't Hutt, you know. And so uh, anyway, uh, they, they dropped little from, from Hutt, and I became just plain Hutt. And, uh, and it's just a nickname that stuck with me from uh, all the way from, you know, probably 10 years old all the way up to now. Now, how did you get inducted into the Alabama game? Well, I, when did that come about? Well, the Alabama gang. Let me let me back up. And let me clarify this because my daddy in law probably beat me up if I don't say this. <laughs> uh, uh, the Alabama gang was originally uh, Bobby Allison and Donnie Allison and Red Farmer. That's the three, uh, and they are. Um, you know, a, a licensed team. Uh, okay. You know, and uh, right, it's, okay. It's those okay. three there are, right. the, are the are the official Alabama gang. Uh, over time, Neil Bonnet come along, and then then Davey and and myself, and, uh, and 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 I guess what happened over time, the fans, uh, if you were from Alabama, um, you know, just said, "Well, you're part of the Alabama gang." And, uh, you know, we, we get in an argument. We got into an argument one time here not long ago on Facebook. Not really an argument, but, um, you know, I get tired of people saying, you know, you're, you're you know, uh, especially, you know, different ones saying, you know, you're not, you're not part of the Alabama gang. I said, well, let me tell you what. I was born in Alabama, I, in Birmingham, Alabama. I grew up in Alabama. So, and, and that's more than any one of the other three can say. You know, so so therefore, I'm more Alabama gang than any of those three. Whoa, but, but, okay, uh, all right. But anyway, so that's that's where that come about. But you know, it's it's I'm honored to be 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 you know uh, affiliated with that group and love them all to death. Uh, they're all family to me, and uh, you know they're they're special people. And uh, you know, like I said, I'm honored any time to get mentioned when they are. You know, well, Bobby and Donnie, if you're out there listening. <laughs> I I did not mean to step on any toes. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're they're good with it. Now, how did you and Pam meet? Now, you you mentioned your father in law, and of course, your father in law is Donnie Allison. So, yep. how did you and Pam meet? Well, it was in the summer of nineteen eighty. Uh, her cousin Davy uh, and myself and. Uh, another guy named Jimmy Kitchens that some people around Alabama might have heard of. Uh, another guy named Sammy uh, San Filippo. His dad owned a speed shop there in Birmingham. Uh, we were all riding down the beach in Panama City, Florida, uh, hollering, screaming to all the girls in the in the in the in the, in the Bobby Allison van, and uh, you know we were getting a lot of waves and all that stuff. And anyway, Davey said, uh, "Hey, there's Pam and Lisa over there on the side." You know, I said, "So." I said, he turned in there. I said, "Who's that?" He said, "Well, that's uh, Pam is Donnie's daughter." I said, oh, "Okay, you know, well, I knew Donnie had a daughter, but I'd never met her." And so anyway, we pulled in there, and, and uh, so Pam and her friend walks up to the driver's side of the van, and Davy was driving, and she said, uh, "Oh, who all y'all got in there?" And he said, "Oh, I got uh, you know Hut Strickland and D- Jimmy Kitchen, and Sammy, whatever." Anyway, uh, so she. Made a beeline, come around the right side of the window, and she stuck her hand, stuck her finger in the, you know, and said, "I hate your guts. You win every week. You know, <laughs> said you beat Davy every week. You know, I hate your guts. You know." So I just rolled my window up on her because I used to win. And this was Pam. Um, this was Pam. Okay. Yep, yep. All right. Telling and, you that she hated you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. I got. And you. so anyway, uh, uh, you know, we we I rolled the window. I I, I was at that time I was pretty hated around the area because I won a lot of races and what have you. And uh, nobody likes, you know, winter. 
And uh, anyway, so uh, but anyway, make long story short, a couple weeks later, um, somehow or another, we – I don't remember if I called her or she called me or she sent me a letter or apologized. I don't remember. If something – Something happened, and uh, we exchanged phone numbers via a postcard or something, and uh, and we've been together basically ever since. You know. Now you were in a Bobby Allison racing van. Yep. Yep. And wouldn't you know it, the one person who would not be impressed by a Bobby Allison racing van would be Donnie Allison's daughter. Donnie Allison's <laughs> daughter. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, she wasn't impressed with the van at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, you did win the Dash Championship mm-hmm. in 1987. How did Winston Cup? 1986, when we won that. Yep. Don't, don't let the facts get in the way of okay. a good story. <laughs> I got it off of okay, Wikipedia. Okay. Hey, listen, I got it off of Wikipedia. It has okay. to be, it has oh, okay. to be true. true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you win the Dash Championship mm-hmm. in 1986. How did Winston Cup first come into the picture? How did you make the decision or was that just the next step or what was going on there well i i had run an awful lot of um late model races and and won a lot uh championships uh, track championships things like that and uh, when the opportunity to come up to drive for uh actually a friend of mine there in haleyville alabama got him billy knight i drove for him for off and on for i guess a year and then then the opportunity to come up to drive for richard mash uh who who uh, Michael Waltrip and uh, Dean Combs, name a few guys that had awful good success with him. But that ride came open, and uh, I said, man, that's golden opportunity. So um, went there and done that for a year. Um, won the championship. We won an awful lot of races together. Um, actually won way more than we lost. And uh, But um, in 87, when it rolled around, I, um, they wanted me to stay. Had a had a – real good sponsor uh coming on and and i said no uh you know i've done about all i can do in this division i want to move on to the next step uh took a big gamble uh took uh uh 87 when 87 come along i had an opportunity another guy m- moved in the shop there with richard mash to start a winston cup team uh got him as, uh, by the name of skip Janey. um it was a yellow number 76 car looked like a 76 ball but um uh, we went and run uh, three or four races that year together. Um, you know, had a lot of promise with that team, uh, and just but we never could acquire the sponsorship. And basically, uh, in '88, uh, I took a year off. I did probably eight or ten races. Uh, you know, going anywhere that I could take my helmet and get in the car. Uh, but I did more promoting Hut Strickland. Basically, try to get you know get in a ride in a Cup car, and. Uh, by winning a dash championship, it 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 got got my foot in the door with Pontiac, and then the Pontiac people knew who I was and all that stuff, and and then I, when the opportunity come up to go drive for Rod Osterlin in the Heinz catch-up car, it being a Pontiac, you know that was another plus there. So uh, we just you know was able to uh, basically get a full year with with the Osterlin car with the Heinz catch-up, and uh, you know it it um, you know. Things didn't go right. We didn't have a lot of money, um, you know, and that. And uh, but um, you know, we just um, you know, 1990 come along when I went um, basically started the season with nothing. Uh, had a couple rides here and there, and then the ride opened up. The 12 car opened up for with Bobby, and uh, then I kind of went from there, and that kind of kind of set the stage for the rest of my career. You mentioned running for Rod Osterlin, and he, of course, was making his return to the sport. Who was the Rod Osterlin that you knew? Well, you know, I had read, heard uh, an awful lot about him. Um, you know, he, he, he um, you know, from when he was in the sport before. Um, you know, I was expecting a lot more out of that team, uh, you know, from the start because I felt like uh, just like they were before, the money was there. They had to, you know, had the funding to do it. And um, come to find out, uh, you know, the funding and stuff it was taken to do it, uh, you know, in 1989 was nothing like it was in 1979. And, uh, you know, basically took, you know, um, you know, it was it was pretty minimal in dollars, uh, you know, the high sponsorship. 
uh, you know, and, and but you know, it gave me an opportunity, and I used it as a stepping stone. It was good for me, but um, you know, it, it was somewhat of a letdown because I thought, you know, things would 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 have turned around and got better, and they didn't. You know, basically. Rod, of course, had given Dale Earnhardt his mm-hmm. first big break in the sport, and then Rod sold the team uh, midway through the '81 season. Did you talk to Dale before, during, or after taking that deal? Or is talked this... to Dale afterwards, uh, more during, I guess not. You know, after I got the deal with him, yeah. Uh, um, you know, a little bit as things was going on, and he, you know, he, he you know, he was really. Um, you know, don't stick your neck too far out on a limb type thing. And, but, you know, I was, um, you know, I, I was, I was in a position there where I was using it as a stepping stone to try to get to a better ride. Right. You know, and, yeah. and, and, um, didn't like having to, having to do that, but it was one of the things, you know, yeah. th- that you had to do. Yeah. You know? Speaking of Donnie. He, he was your crew chief for a handful of races yep. with Rod. Mm-hmm. How did that dynamic work? Um, worked good with me. <laughs> I, I, you know, I enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Donnie was at a good. It was a good time in the cars. Uh, Donnie, um, Donnie got our cars all basic. Uh, you know, did away with a lot of the tricks that we were fighting. Um, you know, our our, our performance became. Uh, we was ta- taking less, able to take less and do more with it. And uh, but Donnie had reached a point, um, you know, he, he wasn't getting paid, and then and then you know we'd show up and a, uh, you know, Goodyear wouldn't give us any tires, you know, and and things like that. And it just kind of got to the point, you know, he said, "Hud, I'm sorry, I hate to bail on you, but I can't, you know, I can't take this, you know." And I fully uh, yeah, understood, yeah, you know, yeah. and and I was I was committed for the whole year and. You know, I wish it would have worked out, but it didn't, you know. I did not know this, but you evidently drove one of the Days of Thunder cars for Rick Hendrick at mm-hmm. Darlington early in 1990. How did that come about? Um, well, um, actually two ways. Um, um, Jim Freeman's wife, Carolyn Freeman, she was the liaison from NASCAR to the folks that was – the moot the film crew at Days of Thunder, and um, they needed a um, you know somebody to drive one of the cars from time to time, and uh, for filming what have you, and so uh, basically that's how it how it come about. Uh, what what kind of sped up the process uh, a little bit in eighty excuse me in nineteen ninety, uh, we were down there with um, TriStar Motorsports. We, we was the fastest second round, fastest qualifier for the for the Daytona 500. Um, and um, anyway, uh, we were running in the 125, secure spot, one of the 125s at the time. And uh, Ken Schrader was driving for uh, Hendrick. And anyway, he got in the wreck and um, uh, basically in the wreck, uh, he was trying to make a pass or something. I don't remember on whoever he was racing with. Anyway, both of us wrecked. He, you know, and I got caught up in their mess basically. And uh, anyway, when that happened, then uh, Rick offered us a backup, one of the backup days of Thunder cars to run in Daytona 500 in 1990. Okay. And that's basically where, where that relationship started. And then uh, you know we, which basically when he brought the car over there to us, it was, it was far from being. A race car it was it was you know windows was out of it 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 was a lot of crush panels didn't have an engine transmission we took you know our our wreck car and put stuff in it and it was kind of a mess but anyway um as 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 time went on the rest of that year um you know we had had a couple of opportunities to do um you know drive the drive that car and it was it was pretty cool i enjoyed that how did the deal to drive for bobby come about um well, Mike Alexander was 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 their driver. Uh, Mike, uh, and I guess it was in eighty nine in December of eighty nine, he went to the Snowball Derby and had a uh, got a head injury, um, and he started the season with them, uh, but he wasn't fully recovered from his head injury basically, and uh, 
as time went on, uh, I'm guessing a handful of races down the road, six, eight, ten, I don't remember. Um, anyway, they they had called me and said, hey, you know, would you be interested? We'd love to have you. And so, um, what it turned out, it was a, you know, it was a, by far the, you know, one of the best rides that I had I had driven at that time. And of course, the way things had turned out, I ain't so sure it wasn't the best ride I had. You know, one of the best rides I had throughout my whole career. Uh, had a lot of good people. Um, the owners, I loved the owners to death. You know, Bobby had two or three owners that was, you know, loved them all to death. Great people. Uh, got along good. Uh, you know, the crew. We had good times together. It was just. Uh, it was a good marriage, you know. Um, I, I, you know, wish we could have won won several races, and we had opportunities to do that. It just didn't work out. June in nineteen ninety one, you go to Michigan and you finish second to Davy. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about that day? Um. Well, there's a couple things. Um, you know, the cool thing was uh, I flew up there with Davy in his own plane, and uh, you know, we we, you know. We'd all, I flew actually flew a lot of places with him, not just there, but anyway. Um, and when we was flying back home, uh, I remember uh, the one thing I do remember is didn't really have anything to do with the race, but but the cool thing we get up in the air and Davey looks over at me and says, "High five, you know, day one two, you know, two guys from Alabama went up there and kicked everybody's butt, and and you know that was that was pretty cool. Um, but um, you know the race, uh, you know it, it, it was a tough race for us. Um, he was in a position, he didn't want to take out me or his dad's car. And, and I was in a position, I didn't want to take him out either. And, uh, because I wouldn't have a ride home, but, <laughs> but, but no, seriously, it, it, uh, you know, it was, it was a, it was a hard fought day for, for both teams. And, um, you know, he just, uh, handled a little bit better than I did down the straightaways as Bobby used to say. And <laughs> that was what got us, you know. How big a deal was that to you personally? After everything happened with Osterland and kind of- oh, it was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, it, you know, it was real gratifying. Um, you know, it wasn't a few few races after that. Rod come back, uh, saw him. I think at Darlington or somewhere after that. And Rod said, "Hey, if you ever want to come back and drive for us, we'd love to have you again." You know, and of course I said, "No, nah, thanks, Rod. Thanks, Rod." But I'm <laughs> I'm set right here where I'm at. You know, but um, it it was extremely gratifying. You know, you did wind up parting ways with Bobby's team late in 1992. Was that a deal where you were, where you already had the deal to go drive the 27 car for Junior? Was that already in place, or how did that all work out? Um. Well, part of what happened, let me, I'll tell you a little bit leading up to that. We we had we were falling out of races for a lot of stupid stuff. Um, you know. For whatever reason, not pointing any fingers at anybody, um, but you know we was having a lot of things happen, and um, I felt like some of it was just neglect, you know, maybe uh, it was just weird things happening, you know, brake lines breaking, different things, you know, that don't normally happen. But if you was watching, you'd see the tire rubbing the brake line, or you something different things, you know, different, you know. Anyway, um, so I, I told Bobby, you know, I, t- I sat down and talked to Bobby a little bit, and and. And Bobby's, um, you know, he, he just said, you know, this is what we got and this is how we're going to be. And I said, okay, I fully understand, you know. And so uh, um, when, the, when the deal came open, um, I was kind of torn between the 27 and the – well, I didn't know at the time it was going to be the 27. It was uh, originally going to be the 22 yeah. and uh, with Mike Beam and uh, uh, because it looked like Sterling was going to be moving on. And uh, and then of course Richard was, you know, when was stepping out of the forty three, so it's kind of tired, kind of tied in between the, you know, both of those teams. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, and was talking to both of them, uh, you know, the deal would come up with McDonald's and and Junior, and I thought, man, that was that was a, you know, a golden opportunity, you know. And so uh, I jumped at that, and um, you know, just um, you know, we. Had okay success for a race or two, but we couldn't ever seem to hit our stride at all. You know, just one of them things. I know that doing business in NASCAR is difficult enough a lot of times, but then you add the family element into it. I would imagine that can get kind of interesting. How tough was it to leave Bobby's? 
Um, very. Yeah, it was very. Um, you know, made it made it awkward a little bit at the family get-togethers. Um, um, you know, because not just Bobby, but uh, uh, Bobby's brother-in-law kind of managed the team, Tom Kincaid, and just you know, it, it, it was kind of a uneasy deal around it. Like I said, at family get-together, family functions, but over time it. You know, it got fine. I mean, we we all accepted it, what it was, what it was, and um, you know, and um, you know, we just we just moved on, basically.